<clears throat> All righty. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. As everyone rolls in, we are so excited to have you all here today. Um, as more people begin to enter, we'll handle some other really fun and random things that I like to do at the very beginning of these. And then we'll roll into a little bit more of our actual programming at around 804, 805 or so. And we'll have everyone trickle on in. But if you're here and you're excited to be here, give us a raise hand function. Zoom used to have this thing where they would pop up like a... Uh, um, like the hands would pop up like a wave on your screen. They took that off, which I don't know why, but we'd love to have some engagement this evening. So we are so excited to all have you here. And why don't we first begin with the chat function. If you could go into the chat function, let me know two different things. The first of which, where you're all zooming in from and two, um, how you guys are doing this evening or morning or night, no matter where you're at, but how are we all doing and where's everyone joining from? And if you could put that into the chat function, that would be amazing. All righty, let's see. So we have someone from Central Virginia doing great. Super excited. Someone is in Spain joining us at 2 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Someone's in China. What time is it in China? Um, if that person could respond, let's see. And we have other people joining from Jersey and Cali and someone from Raleigh. I'm also from Raleigh. So hello from there. 8.01 a.m. in China, so maybe not too, too bad. Our 2 a.m. has definitely won for the most in middle of the night. Um, so we're going to give you the best session ever um, from our, myself and our panelists here. And it seems like everyone's doing great. I'm sure you all are probably still real, maybe not reeling, but just super excited post your admission to Duke. Congratulations, everyone. We'll have a more formal one in just a moment. But um, I'm glad you all are doing well. And so for the people in the chat is, who also would like to turn back around, um, post these first couple of questions, let us know what you've been watching on TV recently and um, what your Zodiac sign is. Because if you think I'm that person that would care about Zodiac signs, you are 100% correct. <clears throat> and let's see what those are. So Suits in a Gemini from Emily. What else do we have? What else do we have? Shadow and Bone, Leo, Virgo. And our panelists too. If you could go into the chat, let us know your Zodiac sign and TV show. You, you, you still count as well. Breaking Bad and Gemini always goes together. You would not believe anyone out there who's a Scorpio who likes either Gossip Girl or American Horror Story. That's also the largest correlation I've seen these past couple of years. Um, Gossip Girl Aries. Okay, awesome, awesome. Oh, here, we'll get started here in just a couple of more minutes. Already. I did not know you were a Taurus Kelly. Whoa, whoa, that threw me. Phoebe, Cancer. Okay, I could see that for Phoebe. What's everyone else? Ainsley, Gemini. Okay, okay. Capricorn. Awesome. Alrighty, so it's around 8.04. We will go ahead and get started this evening. First and foremost, you are here for a Blue Devil student chat for Duke University. And congratulations, because what's special about this one is this is also an admitted students event. So thank you so much. Or first of all, congratulations. You have been admitted into Duke. We are so excited to welcome you here. Uh, maybe we're the first faces you're seeing. Maybe we're a part one of many in your process for your college application process. Um, maybe you've had some of us as tour guides, because we have some tour guides here. So <clears throat> whatever it is, congratulations again on getting in, and we hope to be able to provide as much clarity as possible as to the experience here, so that you all can make informed decisions, or if you're an ED student, so you can get even more excited for this upcoming fall. Um, as we transition over, I want to highlight a couple of things to help with the evening. If you have any questions, go down to the bottom of your screen, and you should see a Q&A function. Q&A function is where you're going to add all of your questions, and we really, really, really encourage all of you to ask us questions. Um, what's so unique about this is that 
you know, if you decide to come to Duke or if you're already coming here, these are going to be the kind of questions that you can ask about how to make your experience as seamless and your transition as seamless as possible in this upcoming year. So please ask us questions. Um, we will either type responses to them or answer them live. We also have some prescriptive, prescriptive questions we'll ask as well at the very beginning, just to get, you know, kind of the juices flowing. Outside of that, for the rest of the session, unless you have technical difficulties, um, let's be sure to ask those questions only in the Q&A function, only in the Q&A function. Um, and from our admissions office, Duke encourages, Duke encourages persons with disabilities to participate in its programs and activities. If you'd like to request accommodation services for an information session, please contact Adela Hackett at adela.hackett at duke.edu or 919-684-0186 to arrange these for a later date, okay? There's also closed captioning available if you select settings um, on our Zoom, so we can have those provided as well. Um, and I have a note about this session being recorded. Chloe, uh, we have an admissions officer in the background, Chloe White, she's awesome. Chloe, this session, let's see. Um, this is being recorded, awesome, great. So we will see that in a um, couple of days uploaded online. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and get some introductions rolling for today. So my name is Devin, my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a senior this year, which makes me really sad to say I won't meet all of you, but um, I certainly know you all are gonna have an amazing time here. I'm double majoring in biology and public policy with a certificate in science and society around campus. I help uh, run our tour guide program. I'm an intern at our undergraduate admissions office. And I also do plant epigenetic research at the Domicu lab. So, um, really involved, love a lot of different things. And here at Duke, you can find so many different avenues to get involved in a number of different ways. So there's no one prescriptive pathway. Alrighty, and we'll have our panelists introduce themselves now in the order that we discussed before. And so I think that kicks it off with Kelly M. Hi, I'm Kelly. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I am a sophomore from Orlando, Florida, um, majoring in psychology and um, some other things around Duke I'm involved with include the Stand Up Comedy Club and um, intramural basketball. Hi, everyone. My name is Phoebe. I use she, her pronouns. I'm originally from Argentina, but live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I am a sophomore studying public policy with a minor in education and a certificate in child policy research. And I'm also involved in tour guides. I am an intern for Duke Student Social Media, which you should all be definitely following, and also help plan the last day of classes music festival. Hi, everyone. I'm Ainsley. I'm a sophomore studying mechanical engineering with an education minor from Arlington, Virginia. Um, and some of my involvements on campus involve working with the Duke Gardens, and then I'm on the club lacrosse team as well. Hi, everyone. Congratulations on accept, getting accepted to Duke. My name is Kelly. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a sophomore from Miami, Florida. I'm double majoring in public policy and sociology with a minor in education. Uh, I am the chair of membership and accountability for admissions ambassadors, and I am on the brief writing team for our moot court, and I'm a student assistant at the conservation and preservation lab. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy y'all could join us tonight. I'm Krishna. I'm currently a junior majoring in economics with a finance concentration and minoring in computer science. On campus, I'm president of Duke Thea, which is our South Asian students organization. I'm a portfolio manager in Duke Investment Club, and I'm also a part of Duke Business Oriented Women. All righty, so we've got a chance to meet our panelists. They're going to be extraordinarily helpful for the rest of the session so that you can all learn a little bit more about Duke. Um, I want to go ahead and encourage everyone, begin throwing those questions in the Q&A. We're going to transition from the questions that we have for our panelists to throwing those over to the questions you all have, because I think those are really important for us to answer um, for our time together this evening. So uh, with that being said, I will go ahead and close out this stop share so we can have all of us on a panel side of the screen. And we will go ahead and begin by asking everyone here in a quick moment, um, if you guys could go through what your favorite memories at Duke have been so far, just get everyone excited, and then we'll highlight a little bit more about the first year experience. So the same order that everyone introduced themselves in, give us a quick second of what your favorite memory has been so far. 
Yeah, so I think one of the nicest things that comes to mind like recently is that the weather has just been so nice. So just seeing everyone kind of outside and enjoying the weather, whether you're just like walking to class or if you get a chance to like sit outside for a meal, it's kind of just been a nice reminder of the community that Duke has being able to kind of see everybody in one place. Um, and so, yeah, that's been really nice. I think my favorite memory was probably midnight breakfast my freshman year. Um, the student council hosts a midnight breakfast right before finals in our dining hall. And it is so, so fun. Everybody's like dressed up in their PJs and they just roll into the dining hall as they please and just grab delicious, yummy food. And it's just, it's just the best time ever. And it kind of gets your mind off of finals and off of studying and just a nice little break. Yeah, I think mine would be this year's countdown to craziness. It's, um, our big pep rally before our basketball season really starts. So um, students kind of camp out in Kayville, which is a section of grass essentially right outside our stadium. And um, they try to be able to get tickets to go to Countdown. And um, it's a huge like event with our dance teams and a bunch of student groups. And then they do a basketball scrimmage as well. And so that's always very, um, hype and great Duke spirit in that one. Uh, I'd say my favorite experience so far would be parent weekend this year because uh, the UNC versus Duke football game happened that weekend. So I was able to go to the game with my mom and my friends and all of their moms. And we actually sat in the away section. So we were surrounded by UNC fans and it was just really fun kind of like going back and forth with UNC fans about football and like that debate going into like Duke history and UNC history. And it's just a lot of fun, like messing around with that rivalry that extends past basketball and, you know, just like that friendly, you know, competition between the two teams. Yeah, I think mine also sort of aligns with sports. My favorite memory was tenting this past um season so essentially if you guys don't know tenting is the process that Duke students go through to try to get a ticket to the Duke UNC basketball game at home in Cameron Indoor Stadium and it's just a long process of basically you and like your 11 closest friends live in a tent for an extended period of time um and it sounds a little iffy right now but I like swear it was my best experience ever I'm so close with all of my friends like closer than I was before and it was really nice just being able to um, you know, stay up and talk until like 2 a.m. about the most random things in life with some of my closest friends in a tent. And then afterwards, we won the game and we got to burn the benches, which was also just a really great memory. Great. Hopefully you all can start getting excited because these memories are so, so fun. Um, tenting in the Duke UNC game is always a really big student favorite. So, so fun here on campus. Let's turn over our first official question. Let's start with Phoebe. Um, if you could tell us a little bit about what Duke does to help with the transition to college. So maybe our pre-orientation programs, what that looks like for students, that kind of stuff. So Duke does something very unique, which um, is our experiential orientation programs that they rolled out this past year. And basically this isn't your normal orientation. You're not going to be touring around campus or like sitting in on a lecture or being taught like how to live at Duke. Instead, they really, really want you to build that community from day one and get to meet your classmates before upperclassmen start moving in and before classes even start. And you're not going to be doing this in a normal scenario. Instead, you get to be placed in different orientation groups. Um, some can include Project Build, which is like basically our version of like Habitat for Humanity. We also have Project Discovery or P-Disco, which is like discovering Durham and you get to do a lot of fun activities there. Uh, Project Wild, you're like camping out for like a couple days, no showers, take that as you will never would be my first choice but a lot of people love it um and the whole point of it is for you to really start making friends and they make that so easy because everyone's excited everyone wants to get to know each other and you're doing such fun activities while you're doing that so it makes that transition into building that 
friend group and to really making sure you know everybody so much easier. So once classes starts, you start seeing some friendly faces in the hallway. You're not as scared. You can ask questions. And also these projects, like these like orientation, um, whatever experiential programs are all um like led by upperclassmen. So you also get to start making even more connections with them and get those friendly faces um, outside of just East Campus. Great, thank you. Um, turning over our next question to Kelly, could you tell us a little, oh, Kelly A, Kelly A. <laughs> um, could you tell us about dorms and living on East Campus? Uh, maybe some of the experiences you've, you've had, maybe the things your RAs do, uh, what makes it really fun, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so for the dorms, all freshmen live on East Campus, which is something unique to Duke. So basically everyone around you, everyone in your dorm hall and everyone on that campus, everyone's freshman, a freshman. So it's really interesting and really nice just kind of being surrounded by people that are also freshly leaving, you know, their homes and experiencing all these new things on their own. So you kind of get to know and get to know people, just how Phoebe mentioned, this is another way of getting to know the community and getting to know your class. So for East Campus, there's a lot of different dorms. So now there's something called Quad X. So basically where you guys live on East will transition to where you live on West. So you'll get to live with the same people um, all of the years of being at Duke. So I personally lived in West House, which I think it's now called like West Residence Hall. I lived with Ainsley actually. So that was really fun. Um, so our RA, uh, our, I loved our RA freshman year. He basically did a lot of events um, to kind of just do like community building. And so that you can get to know the people in your hall, which a lot of RAs in the dorms across East Campus will do. So they'll do kind of like you know, on Halloween and they'll hand out like little goodie bags and you could like go trick-or-treating or in O week, which is orientation week, which is when all the freshmen move in a week before everyone else just to kind of see the campus and get to know the ways and wisdoms of college before everyone gets there. In O week, RRA um, did like a tour of East and West campus to try to, trying to get us assimilated to kind of like the college environment. So in general, just living on East campus is a way of Duke helping um, all of our high school seniors transition to college by making sure that everyone's surrounded by a community that's similar to them. And the way that the dorms are assigned is that you um, will get like a housing application and you answer a few questions like basically asking like if you go to sleep late or early, if you like studying with music or quiet, just kind of some preferences like that. And then they'll match you to a dorm. And then your roommate is random freshman year. Do not be afraid because um, personally for me, random roommate was a fantastic experience and you get to know someone from like par probably across the country that you probably would not ran into and don't be nervous. Um, it's really not that bad. Just establish boundaries at the beginning of the semester that you need to be comfortable and, you know, nine times out of 10, they'll respect that. And if you have any problems, your RA is the best person to go to point of contact if you just kind of want to settle some things. So yeah, it's just an awesome experience and living on East campus. Um, I think I kind of took it for granted um, because I wanted to move to West so badly to be with like the Gothic architecture, but you know, respect the red bricks on East campus. It's a lot of fun and you're going to make a lot of memories that you're going to look back to later on and kind of like feel nostalgic. Completely agree, Kelly. Everyone, it's interesting. We have less roommate transfers now than we did when we let everyone choose their roommate. Um, so that random roommate process, I know it sounds a little daunting at first, but it's really, really fun and super cool. My freshman year roommate was from Tokyo, Japan, uh, from Raleigh. We were super, super different, but it was awesome to be able to meet someone from such a different background, right? Um, all right, let's move over. Question for Kelly M. Um, Kelly M, I want to ask you, <clears throat> it's not a specific question, but what are some other aspects about East Campus that you think um, you really enjoyed? Maybe any tips for students here as they begin to matriculate? Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I guess Kelly kind of alluded to this, but just like having that freshman community where like everyone you see is a freshman, everyone you talk to is a freshman, it kind of just helps you feel like you have that built-in community. Um, and also like the fact that there's a freshman dining hall and like every time you go to get a meal, you're gonna see friends, you're gonna see people you recognize because you know they're just people from your class. Um and also, I think it just kind of eases that transition too. It feels less overwhelming because you kind of know everyone that you're 
living with is going through a similar transition. Um, you'll probably have a lot of classes with the same people that you live with. Um, and there's also um, something called house council, where if you want to be involved with like programming stuff for your dorm, um, you can run for house council, be involved with um, events for your dorm, um, creating merch for your dorm. So it just creates a sense of like even smaller community um, within the East Campus community. So yeah, it's it's a really nice feature of Duke. Amazing. So let's turn over to a couple of academic questions now. I'm going to point over to Ainsley and Krishna. Um, Ainsley, for Pratt, because you are a student who is in our engineering school, um, can you talk about the first year experience within like the academic structure of that? And maybe talk about what Pratt students experience in their first year too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have like pretty set curriculum first year. Um, so you'll take a lot of the prereqs for the upper level courses. Um, and so my freshman fall, I took um, like math and um, your intro chem and then um, all freshmen take writing 101, regardless of your major, regardless of what school you're in. And you get a little bit of say into what like topic you'd like to dive into with that, but it's just so they kind of create the standard of what they'd like to see in writing at Duke. Um, and then all of the engineering freshmen take Engineering 101, which honestly I think has been my favorite course at Duke. Um, it's a project-based class. So you have one project for the entire semester and they pair you up with real clients in the Durham and um, honestly broader than that community. Um, my project was for the Duke Gardens, which was kind of how I got involved with the gardens. Um, it was an educational model, so they could show how water flows through soil, but I've also heard of people working with the hospital and people working with families in Durham with children with disabilities, just really trying to solve a real world problem. Um, and I think it's a really good introduction to engineering and it gives you a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel so you can have a lot more motivation for the other classes. and. Um, I think it was a great way to kind of see into what we'd be doing down the line. Um, and just Pratt experience, I think it's wonderful. It definitely creates an incredible community. Um, and I feel like most people, I don't feel isolated to just the engineering community either. I feel like everyone kind of branches out and you can really investigate a lot of your different interests at Duke as well. Thank you, Ainsley. And, you know, Krishna, can you talk to us a little bit about the Trinity side? I know you're a junior now, but maybe it gives you a better perspective in the sense of, you know, declaring major, that kind of stuff. Um, if you could highlight your experiences so far um, in our Trinity program, she, if you all don't remember, is doing economics, the finance concentration, and a CS minor, so computer science minor. Yep. Um, so Trinity, you also like Ainsley said, have to take a writing class and a seminar class, which is um, a smaller, more like discussion-based class your first year. Um, we also have something called a focus program your first year. So um, if you're particularly interested in like a sort of discipline that the focus program focuses on, um, you can basically take two classes and a seminar in the program. And essentially you will be with the same students and living with those students in those classes in your program. Um, for your entire first year, and you'll be taking the classes and the seminar with them for your first semester on campus here. Trinity overall is our arts and sciences college. We have something called Trinity requirements, and a lot of people like equate this to like general education requirements, but these are really great in that they help you take classes that aren't in your major. Um, when you look at them first, it can be like a little bit of over, overwhelming because you have like modes of inquiry and areas of knowledge, but they're really easy to get through because like classes just count for so many different modes of knowledge, so like research, writing, social sciences, quantitative sciences. And it really just comes naturally when you're like taking different classes at Duke because it's very rare that you will just be taking like just econ classes in your time here because it's just natural for us to want to explore our different interests. And Trinity just makes it so easy to be able to take classes in different majors if you think you're interested in this, but you may like also what's, want to think about a minor in like education or public policy. And I also want to note that like, if you're thinking about possibly switching between like Pratt and Trinity, like maybe you thought engineering was for you, but it's no longer for you. 
it's very easy to do that process. And the last thing I want to note is that we have program two in Trinity, which is essentially like a design your own major type thing. So if you think like the intersection of healthcare and business, for example, is very interesting, but you don't want to do like some type of pre-med, bio, economics type thing, you can actually um, design your own major and list out what courses and capstones you essentially have to take and have it approved and that will be your major. Great, thank you. Um, Chloe in the background had actually mentioned a really big program that we'd love to talk about. Um, Kelly M, if you could tell us what focus our focus program is for first year students and um, talk to us about your experience. It's a really cool opportunity for students during their fall semester. Yeah, so um, as Krishna mentioned, it's a freshman program where you will take two classes um, that are kind of like clustered together. Um, and you will also live in the same dorm as the people that you have those classes with. Um, so there's, I think, maybe about like 10 focus programs, and each of them has three to four courses within them that you like rank which ones you want to take, and then you'll get placed in two of those. Um, so I did the American experiences focus, which was like um, history and or like American history and politics. Um, and so I took like two of those classes. And then every week we have a focus dinner with our professors um, and all the students in that focus. So it really was a good way for me to kind of like meet friends initially um, because you have that interaction with them outside of class, you have something in common. Um, and so I would really recommend it. And especially since like, it's just your first semester. So, you know, if it's not like a high risk, like you don't have to take it all year if you end up kind of liking it less than you thought you would. But um, I had a really good time with it and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I want to echo Killiam's point. I also did focus my freshman year and it com actually completely changed my majors. I had to be that cliche person that's like, it changed my life, but um, it did. And I ended up picking up public policy as a second major to help contextualize STEM and um, public administration. And we took a trip to DC and I'm actually doing the certificate program that was derived from my focus experience. So I would I would say focus is a really cool thing. Um, it's something that also exposes you to a lot of new ways of thinking because they're very interdisciplinary in nature, as Kelly was saying, right? It's something that you can look at multiple multiple ideas and a lot of different facets of um, academics. So with that being said though, let's talk about for a second research before we dive into the questions you all have had. Quickly for our panelists here, who has been involved in research throughout their time here at Duke? Any questions? All right, great. Let's ask Phoebe about her experience she's had so far because you are a sophomore, so you're a little bit closer to the first year experience. Um, talk to us about research at Duke. Is it easy to get involved in? So I think it definitely is because professors love to share their research with you. You send out an email to them that you're interested in what they're working on. They are very likely to get you a position in their lab or in their team. Um, graduate students are constantly doing research and they are sometimes your TAs. So don't be afraid to ask them for any information, anything they know, because they are your number one source for that. Outside of just a quick email. You can also apply through Muser, which is a platform we have here at Duke where professors actually post um, the research they're doing and the number of research assistants they're looking for, and you can apply for those there. I personally got involved in research this year as a sophomore um, through Bass Connections, which is an interdisciplinary program, and they have different projects available to anyone. Um, you just have to apply and get in, but they range from, I mean, my personal one is a Latinx student reading program where we work with kids in Durham and just really measure their levels of motivation when reading in Spanish to creating a database of female philosophers. Um, also one that studies like um, the school to prison pipeline. There's something for everybody. And something that I learned once I got to Duke was that research does not have to happen in a lab. Um, it can happen anywhere. For me personally, my research happens over Zoom. Um, and that's basically like the one and most important thing you can get out of this is there's opportunities for everyone. You don't have to be a pre-med major or like bio major um, in order to get involved. Might as well 
send that email, apply for that position because you never know. And you might just be working with wonderful Durham kids and teaching them how to read. So might as well try. And Krishna, what kind of research have you been involved in? If you want to highlight a little bit more about what you've done so we can hear another side. Yeah, I mean, I think Phoebe covered most of it. I did um, research, like I did antitrust research in the econ department for my first year. Um, it was a little weird because it was during COVID. So like a lot of it was virtual. Um, but I applied on Muser, which Phoebe talked about, where I just thought it was interesting. I knew I was very underqualified. But I just had a conversation with the um, PI who was leading it, the principal investigator. And I was like, I think it's really cool. And I really like to get some exposure on it. And she was like, cool, and brought me in. Um, so yeah. Great. All right. So we're at the around 30 minute mark. I'd love to turn it over to questions that you all have been asking so far. Um, and I please encourage you all to ask more as we continue through here. We have about um, looks like six or so to answer out live right now, but um, let's go ahead and begin. I'd love to ask Kelly um, a question about the collaborative undergraduate experience. So, so far, um, from what you've seen here at Duke, right, when you're in courses, how do students seem to interact? What's the community like here, um, especially in your, um, in your department? I I will take it. Um so for <laughs> for Kelly, the yeah, Kelly. Yeah. yeah, okay. So the collaborative experience, I would say that the environment at Duke is really healthy and that everyone kind of pushes each other to, you know, mo like to do better in these classes. Um so I would say that there's like a slight healthy competition between your peers in the sense that if you need help, they are there for you. I've never had someone who I thought was kind of like gunning out or didn't want me to do well in any of my classes I think that you know getting to know your peers in your class is especially important because you know they're the first point of contact when you need help with something in the class and you might be like too nervous to ask your professor so you could just ask one of your classmates and they'll be willing to like help you out and give you like helping hand and then the next point of contact that kind of helps like the collaboration is the professor themselves um so I think that is really just has to speak towards like the Duke environment and kind of the types of students that we have are willing to help each other, um, kind of help everyone get that step up in the classroom. I would say that also going back to like the professor collaboration would be that Duke offers something called Flunch. So this gives um, students the opportunity to take their professors out for lunch on like Duke dining meal points. So they give you a certain amount of um, like money to take your professor out. And that's a great way of you getting the professor out of the classroom, getting to know them on a personal level without having to make it academic. Like you could really ask them, this would be the perfect opportunity to ask them about research. If you're interested in joining the type of research that they're performing outside of the classroom, just get, you know, just get to know them um, like in a more informal manner. And these are all just, you know, this is just one of the many types of examples that Duke offers for students that I think that first years should really take um, advantage of because I didn't flinch anyone freshman year so that's I think it's like $75 or 75 food points that they give you so that's two semesters that I could have you know taken a professor out and started forming that relationship with them um, and you could do the flunch with other classmates so if you're too nervous to go by yourself um, the first time I flunched I went with this girl in my class and we flunched our professor together so it's a great way of not only networking with your professor but also networking with your fellow classmates yeah <laughs> Amazing. And I'd love to take this opportunity too, as we're, you know, discussing a little bit more about our, our campus culture. If we well, let's do a round robin on this question, but you know, obviously all of your time is not going to just be spent on Duke's campus, right? So let's talk a little bit about Durham in a moment. Um, if everyone here could go around and give a best thing to do in Durham, your favorite thing to do in Durham, whether that's a restaurant experience or it's just something that you've done before in the past, let's hear that in the order that we um, introduce ourselves in. So Kelly M, take it away. Yeah, so one thing I really like to do is kind of just go get like ice cream on a random night with my friends. Um, there's actually a lot of good ice cream places in Durham. Um, there's like a few downtown and then a few other ones that are just like 10 minutes away, 15 minutes. So it's kind of just a nice little like excursion. Um, and there's like a good amount of people as well that have cars here. So you're definitely going to like know someone who has a car and would be able to kind of just like carpool everyone to get ice cream and take a little break from campus. 
I am a giant foodie. So I want to visit every single restaurant in Durham. And I think I'm getting almost there, hopefully. Um, but I do have some favorite restaurants myself. Of course, I am a sushi lover. I'm sushi, 10 out of 10 place. Must go if you are in Durham, if you're visiting. Um, also, just like Mothers and Sons. Mateo's such good places but my all-time favorite is Foster's Market best breakfast in Durham I'm a big stan will forever and ever take anyone that I meet over there um if you ever want a good study spot that's like busy but like it's still cool and kind of quiet outside with like great food go to Foster's I second all this <laughs> um I I'm a big farmer's market fan it's like right off of main street or it might be on main street I don't know um but definitely walkable from east campus so please take advantage of that next year um I miss being that close um definitely doable from west too but yeah it's Saturday mornings and then sometimes Wednesday evenings and it's just wonderful and you get to you know get to see Durham and you also get to see a lot of local Durham vendors and great people down there as well. Uh, I, it's, I think for me, my favorite thing to do off campus are like, there's like random activities that you haven't done since like middle school. So there's bowling like 10 minutes away that I go like way too often. And it like reminds me of those field trips in like fifth grade to that random bowling alley. That's like super dark. So, you know, there, I go bowling very often. Um, I just started going ax throwing, which is a lot of fun because who knew throwing, you know, an ax at a target would be fun. And there's also mini golf right by the bowling place. So there's a lot of little like niche spots that have these like activities that might feel nostalgic or might like be like new kind of hobbies that you take on that, you know, a little simple Google search will show you like there's a lot of stuff in like the Durham kind of like pushing Chapel Hill vicinity, which is like maybe like 15 minutes away. So like just like searching up like fun things to do in Durham will show you like bowling, mini golf, movies just like oh there's like I don't know what it's called here in Miami it's called top golf I don't know what like it's called like drive shack here or something shack something shack here so you know there's just like a lot of little fun spots to like get together with your friends and do these activities to kind of just take the relieve the pressure off of school a little bit it is it is drive shack but we're also getting a top golf next year so exciting um I think one of my favorite things to do is to visit Eno River State Park. Um, you know, I really just enjoy hiking, sitting by the river. The weather here is really nice most of the year. So it's really just nice to spend a day um, with my friends, just chilling. And I'll round it out as well. The food scene here is amazing. Um, I think one of my favorite things to do is, um, my friends, <laughs> we love going to, um, so downtown there's this place, it's like a pool place. I don't, it, a billiards house, I guess is what you would call it. I mean, it's right up the street from my um, apartment and it's just so, so fun. And it's also just kind of random. Like I'm the only one that also knows how to play pool correctly. So like, it's just us arguing about how to play or me saying the right way to play and everyone else arguing with me. Um, but we love doing that. Maple View Ice Cream Farm, gorgeous, gorgeous sunset. It's, um, I love that Durham provides you the sense of like, it's very urban here. Like we have like big buildings, that kind of stuff. Um, but also just, you know, 15, 20 minutes away, right? You're kind of like out in the middle of nowhere, farm. It's really nice. It's great to relax. Um, and I saw that someone here was kind of nervous about thinking that Duke was kind of somewhere isolated. We're only around <clears throat> 15 or so minutes from the airport, RDU, major international airport. And then around 30 or so minutes away from the capital of North Carolina, Raleigh, where I'm from. So, I mean, not isolated at all. There's always something to do. A lot of my friends are going to a... a the Durham Bulls play, which I believe is a minor league baseball team here in Durham, um, and just so much to do. And there's so much to do on campus too. So even if you don't want to go off campus to do stuff, there's always events on campus for you to do. I'm going to turn it over to Krishna again to ask a question related to study abroad, because she said she had done Duke in New York, which is one of our study away programs here, because we have domestic and international programs. If you could talk about what that experience was like, um, and when you went, that would be amazing. Yep. Um... I love study abroad city away programs. 
everyone should do it if it fits into your plan. Um, I did Duke and New York financial markets the spring of my sophomore year. Most people tend to go junior fall just because um, junior spring, well, basketball season is in the spring and people don't really like missing that. Um, I think studying abroad is a very valuable experience and it's like easy to do because we have a global education office, which um, will help you like fit study abroad, study away into your major program. So even like I have friends who are pre-meds who are engineers. I've had friends who are just figuring out how to take the right classes so that they can spend a semester abroad in whatever country there is. And then we also just have so many programs available. So we have Duke in programs and Duke approved programs. Duke in programs are programs where you'll be taking classes with Duke students taught by Duke professors at um, XYZ University and whatever destination location you choose. And then Duke approved programs are um, basically courses taught at other universities by those universities professors, but the credit will transfer over. So there's a lot of flexibility in choosing what kind of a broad program you have. You just have to look. Great, thank you. Um, and then Phoebe, regarding Bass Connections, could you tell our students what that is, um, first year involvement and um, what people can expect in their Bass Connections projects? So Bass Connections, you can, you apply second semester of your first year. Um, these are interdisciplinary projects. You basically work with uh, professors as your advisors, as well as graduate students and other Duke students as part of a team. And you get to present in a Bass Connections showcase and even go to different places to showcase your research. Um, I would say that it, Definitely isn't that hard to get in, but it is pretty competitive. Um, you can apply to up to three projects, I believe. I suggest you apply to all three of them, like if you have, you're interested in three, um, to really just up your chances. I applied to three and I got into the three of them. Um, I would say as long as you are interested and you show that interest in your application, the professors notice, the advisors notice, and you will have a fair shot at getting it. And I think it is a great experience because it is a very guided opportunity um, since it is a credit um, class. So you do take it as part of your semester. I currently have it as my fifth class. So I'm overloading since we have to take four classes a semester, um, but they really just guide you through the entire process. I think it's a great introduction into research since I had never done research prior to this. Um, because they're really just there to support you and really get that data out as fast as possible. And it's a year long project. You really get a lot of work done. It's a great environment. You get to meet a lot of new people, like half of my team I had never known before. And I don't think I would have known outside of Bass Connections. And now there's some of my favorite people to get lunch with. So try it out, apply, take that like first step because I think it's a 10 out of 10 opportunity that is offered here at Duke. All righty, thank you, Phoebe. So um, I'm gonna take a quick question here because I'm come on the closest to this portion of everyone's life in college. So an individual would ask, how does Duke support students after college, career, grad school, that kind of thing? So our career center on campus is amazing for being able to meet with individuals to go over your resume, cover letter, getting prepped for interviews. Um, I think the best way that Duke supports is actually through the student body. Um, a lot of the things that I did to prep for the job market and job application experience was like working with my friends on cases, for example, for if you're interested in doing things like consulting. Um, a number of my friends have gone through looking at financial recruiting, and I'm sure Krishna probably, you're also going through this right now as well, um, as well as the other students. I don't know what other people are up to, but um, I think that Duke is a phenomenal place in the sense that not only does the school have these intra kind of things going on so that they can help students with that process, but they also have a great sense of an alumni community and network that you were able to work with in the application process for places. So, you know, imagine that I submit an application to a firm and then I reach out to an individual who went to Duke and I got to speak with them about my experiences so far, 
Um, it's been great to be able to have that kind of network after and before, and not to mention ending up in cities. I interned in Washington, D.C. this past summer and went to some Duke alumni events that they invite like the interns who are currently at this uh, currently at Duke at so so fun and um, just a great community all the way around but Duke does a lot to make sure that students are prepared um, whether that be uh, not only for like the working world uh, within working for different firms or organizations but also if students are interested in going into professional uh, education or professional schooling so all of those grad school opportunities very prepared for here at Duke um, I can hopefully find some of those metrics for matriculation after your senior year of college, but I believe the business school's almost 99%, law school 98%, med school 85%. Those are some, maybe be some older facts and figures, but um, great opportunities for being prepared to transition on to the next portion of your life. But yeah, so um, a great question here that I want to kind of turn into an opportunity to give everyone advice. So, and someone had spoke about what are some things about Duke that seem intrinsic? you know, um, about life here at Duke, what are opportunities or experiences here that students maybe should take a part, be a part of, or maybe just even some advice for students at Duke. Like what do you think has defined your experience? So let's do a round robin on this one. Everyone, we'd love to hear, you know, maybe words of advice, what you think about your experience here um, so far, or maybe what you would recommend that people do as they, um, as they enter into college. Yeah, so I think one of the pieces of advice that I kind of always give is that like it's okay to say no to some things like when you first get here there's going to be so many opportunities in so many different realms of your life like there's going to be social events there's going to be um, just like extracurriculars like you know if you're someone who likes to work out you're going to have to be balancing that with also like your classes and there's like an extracurriculars fair where you get to like meet all these different people that are involved with different clubs and it can feel like a lot at first I think but one of the nice things about Duke is that you can kind of just try out things um, and yeah, like I said, like, it's okay to say no to certain opportunities. Like, if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed, like, just kind of stick with what makes you the happiest. Um, and don't feel like you have to be doing, you know, 10 different things at once. So that's really funny, because mine was going to be, don't be afraid to say yes. Uh, I think my first week, I was very scared to really just put myself out there people were like let's go get dinner I don't know who you are but I'm I said no I should have said yes I ended up meeting them in class later on but that's a story for later um but I feel like if you come into Duke with this very like closed mindset that you just want to keep doing what you did in high school or you just want to stick to what you know you're really not going to grow and I think Duke does such a great job in providing learning and growth opportunities for you that the same way saying yes to everything will be very overwhelming so sometimes you should say no I I would say don't be afraid to say yes to some things get that lunch with the person you don't know go to that fun arts concert in Biddle Music Auditorium go to that soccer game that nobody's going to because those are the sometimes the opportunities and the experiences that you will remember the most because there are the ones that you wouldn't have done if you didn't really put yourself out there. So the same way you should say no to some things, don't hesitate to say yes. <laughs> yeah, I love this. Um, I would say also don't be afraid to ask for help. I know that's kind of like a generic one, but realistically, like it is a tough adjustment. And um, I would say like immediately kind of asking your professors if you have questions and really making those connections with them and then also like really getting to know people in your classes because um as it was mentioned before like they are your first point of contact when you're like working on a problem set and you realize oh I'm stuck and you know it's due tonight but you it really is helpful to just be comfortable you know it is a tough spot to be in but it's it will make a huge difference um and you know, professor seeing that you're putting in the effort and really trying to wrap your head around things, that goes a long way. I would say that my kind of like 
advice would be to always remember that you're here for a reason and that Duke did not make a mistake in accepting you. I think it's really easy to compare yourself to all, all of your classmates who you think are doing all of these fabulous and wonderful projects and getting straight A's in school and like on all their classes and you see yourself struggling and all these people getting like internships and you haven't gotten into any. So it's really easy to get imposter syndrome being surrounded by, you know, such great students. Um, because at the end of the day, everyone was like the top of their class from where they graduated. So now everyone's the top of the class here. Um, but something that a senior said on a you know panel when I had applied was to remember that Duke did not make a mistake in accepting you. So your application goes through a lot of people before you get admitted. So that's a lot of people that looked at you know your qualifications and your essays and everything that you can bring to the table. And there's absolutely no way that all those people messed up in admitting you. So um, they all saw something in your application that made them want you to come to the school, something that they thought that you could bring to the table. So you just kind of have to figure out what you think you could bring to the table and what you can bring and contribute to the environment at Duke. So, you know, yeah, just remember that everyone's thinking the same thing. So once you do say to your friends, like, hey, like, you know, like X, Y, Z, like you're going to see that everyone's like, oh yeah, I feel the same way. So everyone's kind of having these like feelings of self-doubt and it's completely normal. And you just have to, you know, remember that it's not a mistake that you're here and you're meant to be here and like, it will pass. Like you will essentially at one point feel like you belong once you find your community and you find your people. Um, You just have to, you know, get through it y'all are wise wow um <laughs> I think I'm sort of like echoing what everyone has said but my piece of advice is that it is okay to not know what you are doing it is okay to not know what you want to do in the future and I promise everything will turn out fine in the end um you're here because you can explore. You have so many opportunities at Duke where you can just learn what you like and what you don't like because what you don't like is just as important as knowing what you like. And I think along with like saying yes to things, um, you know, knowing that you belong here, it's okay to be lost at times and trying to navigate um, whatever Duke looks like for you. But knowing at the end of the day, like, whatever you're doing here, you are meant to be doing. And being lost is sort of just a part of the process <laughs> that comes with figuring out what exactly your future from Duke and even at Duke will look like. Yes, and rounding out the advice, I can say wholeheartedly as a senior, when I look back, do not be afraid to fail. Um, it is something that is so, so natural. And I think what's really weird is that a lot of, you know, going to be so honest, right? A lot of Duke students as they matriculate into their first year of, of college are probably not used to the feeling of failure throughout their high school experience, right? They're not used to what that looks like. They're not used to more importantly, how do I take that and learn from it and become better in whatever that is? I could tell you a number of times I have been burned um, my, my time here at Duke. Um, Luckily, though, a lot of them are when I was first beginning my time here during my first and second year. Um, it's not like high school. You can't really wait till last minute to do stuff. There's um, assignments are just different in nature. It's, you know, weird also to just go to class for two hours a day and then have the whole rest of the day to yourself. Right. So there's so many new things and experiences. And so it's not going to work out a couple of times. And that's so, so normal. And please let it happen. Right. It's going to be the way that you really know and find yourself, like Christian was talking about, especially in your courses, um, finding a class that you end up being in that you really don't like is probably about 10 times more valuable than a class that you do, right? Because that really helps you understand a lot more about yourself and about your time here in college. So we have around three more questions I want to try and answer super, super fast here. Um, let me throw this one over to um, Kelly M. Can you talk about certificate programs, what those look like? Um, and I'm not for sure if we have the healthcare one, but I know we have a child policy and advocacy one. So we can may hopefully maybe send a link out about the list of certificates we have at Duke. But what are they, Kelly? Um, 
Yeah. So the certificates are kind of, I feel like they're similar to a minor, but it's more like interdisciplinary and it's kind of like, these are the courses that we're offering that go towards this certificate right now, or like take these certain courses. Um, and it's a little bit more specific than a minor. Um, I don't know. I think there's someone who is doing a certificate, maybe if they want to speak to that. Here, let's have Phoebe. Um, what certificate are you doing? I'm doing child policy and research certificate. Yeah. So I would like to say that they are a little like minors. I would say they're a lot more specific than a minor. I mean, I'm doing a minor in education and a lot of those classes like overlap, which is very nice because I get to like get those done earlier. Um, but they they are definitely a lot more specific. They're a lot more focused on one thing, but they're a great addition to a major, a minor, et cetera, because they are a little bit less, like there's not that many classes required for them. And they are offered for a bunch of different things. I know we now have a healthcare policy certificate. Um, so I don't know if that's a healthcare one that you might be interested in, but there's things like, markets and management, uh, politics, philosophy, and economics. Like there's something for everybody in a certificate, especially if you think that a minor is too broad or you definitely don't want to do an entire major off of one small thing. Um, they're just great opportunities to really like add to your intellect and your knowledge and really just broaden what you already know. Great, thank you. And Kelly A, can you tell us about um, do you feel like there's a divide in like freshman, sophomore, junior, seniors? Like, what does that look like here at Duke um, as we round up our time? Definitely not, because you'll find that in the classes that you're taking, there's people from all of the classes. Um, like, I'm definitely going to be one of those seniors that's taking like intro courses because I left a lot of my general requirements for senior year. So I will be taking like English 101 to satisfy the ALP. So I'll probably be like the senior among freshmen and I will be making friends in that class. And actually one of my closest friends at Duke, so I'm a sophomore, she's a senior. Um, and we met taking a sociology class, like a random sociology elective. So you're going to kind of get to know people outside of your class in practically, if not all of your classes that don't say reserved for freshmen only. Um, so there's no divide at all, I would say, especially not just in classes, but in the clubs that you're in, you're going to get to know a lot of like the exec board members will usually be upperclassmen. So just in being in contact with them, you kind of get to know them and all the other members in the club, there's a lot of upperclassmen. And just by going to something as simple as woo or to a basketball game, like being in line, you overhear a conversation, you pick up on the conversation, and then you made a new friend who might be in, or most likely is in a different grade than you. Um, Duke's kind of like one of those schools where you kind of know everyone, but then you turn to your right and you see someone that you've never met before. So, you know, there's always like room to meet new people while always feeling like you know the people around you. Great. And I'm going to round out this last one. My favorite question people ask, um, what type of students are going to be successful at Duke? And I don't want anyone to think this is like cop-out answer, easiest thing to say. Anyone can be successful as Duke. The biggest thing about this school that I found is that everyone here, um, Duke is not a prescriptive place. We've talked about this before, only two required courses in your entire time here at Duke. And in both of them, you get a choice about what the kind of topic is, um, in, you know, write, a writing 101 course in that first year seminar. The entirety of your time here at Duke is derived on what you want to do. I mean, that's a double-edged sword, right? Because that's really overwhelming at times because you got to know, you have to know yourself. You have to go get it. You have to want it. But it also provides you an opportunity to build exactly the experience that you're interested in. And I've loved that, right? So um, success here at Duke looks like students who are, you know, committed to knowing and learning more about themselves over time. And I think anyone can do that, right? So, and especially as you become, as you come to campus and meet so many incredible people here, um, that are going to be here for, you know, your time here at the, honestly, the, in my past four years here, the very best place in the world, right? It's been amazing um, to have the experiences here on campus that I've shared with my like best friends. So um, I'll say with that as a rounding out our last question, thank you all so, so much for joining us. 
um, this evening for our Blue Devil student chat. Thank you so much for our panelists as well. So insightful every single time. Thank you, thank you. Um, and again, congratulations to everybody out there. You have, you've done it. You're at the other side. I'm sure, I think almost all college applications have come out with their decision. So it's decision time. If you're ED um, and you are, or if you're RD and you already decided, welcome. We cannot, well, I'm sure our panelists cannot wait to see you next year because I'll be graduating. Um, but best of luck with everything. Thank you all so, so much again. Email the admissions office if you have any other questions about your upcoming time here at Duke. They'll connect you with students. Um, and be sure to check out their page for a lot of other events that are coming up. We've got Blue Devil Days this upcoming month, in-person tours, virtual tours, you, you name it, we've got it going on. Um, and we're excited to meet you all, okay? Good luck. Thank you all again, and have the best morning, noon, and night, no matter where you are. Bye, everyone. <laughs>